Recently, there was an article, a very long and in-depth article, published by Rachel Aviv in The New Yorker that was really eye-opening about a, a German st state-sponsored experiment to place foster children, this is children who are either taken from their parents by the state or orphans, with paedophiles. Now, you might think, well, that sounds ridiculous. That can't possibly have been true. But all things are true when everything that's not leftist is Nazi. And that honestly is the framing of this entire thing and still is to this day. Uh, even with the AFD who are like, hey, maybe there should be some recompense paid to these poor children who are put with paedophiles. They're all like, yeah, well, are you sure that's not a Nazi talking point? Literally. And it's like, I'm sure that's not a Nazi talking point. Like, I'm sure that's a perfectly reasonable, middle-of-the-road, centrist talking point. Moderates can get behind that. But anyway, right, so let's let's get into the, the details of this case. It's a very long article. I'll, I'll do my best to summarize it. But it's, it's honestly wild that this is something that we're going to talk about and horrific, obviously, right? So in tw th this began in 2017 because a man named Marco recognized a newspaper photograph of a professor called Helmut Kentler. We'll get into who he is in a bit. Right, they say, uh, he was one of the most influential sexologists in Germany. And if there's one thing I trust more than anything, it's a German sexologist. Wait till you find out that he was a Marxist, right? The article described new research report that investigated what he was called the Kentler experiment, his experiment, uh, beginning in the late 60s, Kentner had placed ch neglected children in foster homes run by paedophiles. The experiment was authorised and financially supported by the Berlin Senate, and in a report he submitted to the Senate in 1988, uh, Kentner described it as, quote, a complete success. He knew they were pedos. He was a pedo. And a communist. This was in East Germany? Yes. Okay. In Berlin. Yes, visible disgust is the response, right? But it gets worse, right? So Marco, seeing this picture, he contacted a political scientist called Theresa Nedwig at the University of Göttingen, uh, Institute for Democracy Research, who had written the report on Kentler. And he told her that uh, she thought that this, these experiments had ended in the 70s. And he was like, uh, no, I was in this foster home until 2003. Wait. That's after the reunification as well. Yes. After reunification, for some reason, communists weren't prescribed. Don't know why. Should have happened. Uh, he also, I mean, the, 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 the chap who they were fostered with was a man named Fritz Henkel, and he had many different foster children, all boys, uh, throughout this period of time. Uh, and so he's got a foster brother called Sven. They had both, uh, who he's close with, the well, other ones he wasn't close with. Well, they weren't even close, actually, but they were just, like, of reasonably the same age, right? Seven. Right, when Sven got into this home. Uh, he lived in Fritz Henkel's home for 13 years, and he told Sven that they'd learned they'd been part of an experiment, and Sven seemed basically unable to process this. Uh, so the government is paying some perverse social scientist to experiment on these children by placing them in paedophiles' households. The hell was the experiment? To Great see if question. pedos are real or not? No, it's to see if that doesn't turn them into Nazis. Well, I'll get the to kids. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand the German mind, Callum. All right, so no, I don't think it needs to exist. Caseworkers assigned, well, I, <laughs> caseworkers assigned Marco to live with Henkel, who was at the time 47 years, years old and single, right? Uh, he had other, eight other, there was, he was the eighth foster son in 16 years, right? This is a quote from the article. When Henkel began fostering children in 1973, a teacher noticed that he was, quote, always looking for contact with boys. Six years later, a caseworker observed that Henkel appeared to be in a homosexual relationship with one of his foster sons. It's not a homosexual relationship. Yeah, I, I yeah, exactly. It's a pedophilic relationship. Yes. I mean, it may be a pederastic gay relationship, but either way, why wouldn't a caseworker be like, hang on? Should we really be given this gay pedophile boys under his care? Is that sensible? Is that wise? Is that prudent? Probably well, not. Rotherham tells us that the people in charge are demented. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when a public prosecutor launched an investigation, uh, Helmut Kentler, Kentler himself, uh, the famous psychologist, and you have to understand, this guy was massively famous in Germany sort of Freudian levels of fame in Germany, right? Uh, uh, became he, he intervened, saying that he was Henkel's permanent advisor. 
right? So they say the newspaper Die Zeit had described him as the nation's chief authority on questions of sexual education. Amazing. On the university letterhead, Kentler issued what he called an expert opinion. Ah, yes, I love hearing from experts on their opinions about what they should, what their, what their opinions on the sex lives of my children should be. The answer is obviously none. Uh, and he had explained uh, that he had come to know Henkel through a research project. So he was closely tied with Henkel in a research project. And later on, we find out that... Uh, Sorry, it's a research project like code for noncery or something. That's yes. Well. Yes, but the, the, the children were being used in a research project by what happens if we put vulnerable young boys with paedophiles? I mean, it sounds like brass eye. Yeah, I mean, this is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Yeah, exactly. that, that meme is real here. I don't, want, I don't mean to laugh because this is horrible. It's so ridiculous that it literally is a, an episode of brass eye. The one thing we didn't want to happen. Eight paedophiles clearly, clearly, and a boy on an island. Like, unironically, this is just awful, right? And so... He uh, he commended Henkler on his parenting skills. The idea that this would stop Nazism. Henkel, as well, right? uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to how it's going to stop Nazism. Okay, it's just sorry, effing absurd, right? He commended Henkel on his parenting skills and disparaged a psychologist who invaded the privacy of his own home, making wild interpretations of their relationship. Sometimes Kentler wrote, "The air an airplane is not a phallic symbol; it's simply a plane," and the criminal investigation was suspended. Obvious lies, right? So every few months, Henkel would drive near the nearly two hundred miles with his own foster children, uh, to see Kentler in Hanover, where he was teaching. Uh, the visits were an opportunity for the, uh, Kentler to observe the children. Marco had been living with Henkel for a year and a half when Sven was uh, assigned to him, and uh, for some reason Henkel seemed ideally suited to this task, said doctors at the clinic. Uh, Sven was a Romanian orphan who was uh, on the street begging, and so they're like, right, okay, you can come with us. Can't have been good. And so Henkel regularly abused these boys, and they simply accepted it as normal because they didn't know any different because they were seven. All of the institutions and professors and people of note around them, the social workers, people like that, they all accepted it. They all thought it was normal. Uh, he says, I accepted it out of loyalty because I didn't know anything else. I didn't think there was a, what was happening was good, but I thought it was normal. I thought of it a bit like food. People have different tastes in food, the way people have different tastes in sexuality. If Sven's bedroom door was open and he wasn't there, Marco knew what was happening, but the two boys never talked about what Henkel did to them. It was an absolutely taboo subject. This was obviously deeply damaging for these boys. I mean, Marco himself seems to have been... He, he says in there at one point that um, essentially his emotions are it's always f coming up against a brick wall so he can never emote. And so he's a very cold, very distant person because of what's happened to him here. Uh, but this is obviously deeply damaging and there are incidents from his childhood that show it. So for example, one night Marco took a knife from the kitchen and slept with it under his pillow when Henkel approached his bed that night, discovered the blade, he withdrew quickly and then called Kentler who handed the phone over to Marco and persuaded him to surrender the knife. Uh, Marco's mother and brother Marco comes from something of a broken home um, but uh, I think I'll get to that in a minute actually but um, the, the reason Marco ended up in this man's care is because when he was five he was playing in the street and was hit by a car not serious it was just a minor injury but this brought him to the attention of the social workers who were like oh well his mother and father are divorced his father was a Palestinian immigrant refugee it's said in the, in the uh and the thing um and his mother worked on a hot dog stand and obviously was trying to make money to pay for her kids and so the state was like right well we're just going to take your boy away and give them to this pedophile and so the mother and brother were allowed to visit roughly once once a month but henkel often cancelled the visits at last minute or cut them short saying they were disruptive and then afterwards marco would sometimes urinate in his bed or lose focus in school writing numbers and letters backwards again all signs that this is an abused child and that there's something wrong the father was not allowed to see him at all because Henkel claimed that Marco was so terrified of his father, he suffered from fearful fantasies whenever he noticed people of Arab appearance on the street. Sure. Marco began seeing a therapist who said that Henkel was holding Marco prisoner. Therapist is saying, well, this guy's holding this boy prisoner. Henkel always sat close by in an adjacent room, and once, after a session began without Henkel realising it, he barged into the room and punched the therapist in the face. Nothing to be concerned about. So when Marco was nine, his mother petitioned a judge for access to her son. The father did not understand why he was growing up in, quote, a strange family deprived of an Arabic education. Well, you're in Germany now, mate. In 1992, there was a hearing and Marco seemed to have been coached on what to say to the judge, saying he wanted to avoid contact with his birth parents, which, of course, Kentley, Kentler strongly advised. 
Quote, after the hearing, Kent sent a letter to the judge saying, for the best interests of the child, I consider it absolutely essential that contact with the family of origin, including the mother, be completely suspended for the next two years. So your mother and father are not allowed to see the boy that we have placed in cu the custody of a paedophile who has a bunch of other boys that he molests. The German justice. Kent Laroffs also emphasised that Marco needed to distance from the men in his family because they set a bad example. And this will this is, this is the eye-opening bit that really ties into why Kentler is doing this, but we'll cover that in a minute. Right, so he said that Marco's mood changed when he spoke about his father, that Kentler had never met Marco's dad, he characterised him as authoritarian, abusive, and macho. Oh look, he has a problem with men and masculinity. Uh, Marco's mother lost her plea for access to her son, and a year and a half later, Marco's father moved to Syria and wanted to say goodbye to his son, but wasn't given any access and there was no record of anyone responding. Anyway, as Marco hit puberty, he began to fight back against Henkel. He started lifting weights, making himself stronger so he could actually resist what was happening to him. And uh, once he actually struck him on the hand when he was trying to molest him, and uh, he stopped um, molesting him at that point, but started instead physically abusing and starving him. Which honestly, I think would be a step up. I'd rather be physically abused and starved than molested by a paedophile. So, anyway, um, but uh, because of the way that he was raised, he wasn't really. He was obviously raised not to have any critical thought, and so he didn't really think about what was happening to him, and didn't move out until he was twenty-one. Uh, so, in summary, the boys were trapped in a foster home with a paedophile, with the permission of the Berlin authorities, and had no particular way of escaping. So, why did this happen? Well, obviously, Kentler is the prime mover behind this, but this can't happen without a certain kind of a certain set of cultural attitudes permeating the society that permits it to happen. And well, of course, it's after World War Two, so you know what any opposition to communist subversion means. That's right. If you don't like this, you must be a Nazi, right? Kentler's father. We, it's very interesting, actually. He was a World War One officer and stern disciplinarian. There was a particular theory from uh, Daniel Gottlob Moritz Schreiber, a best-selling German author, about uh, who's called the spiritual precursor to Nazism, uh, just about how um, people should be incredibly strict with their children and essentially like break the fear out of them when they're children and things like this and it's like right okay this is obviously awful this kind of monomaniacal view of what a person is uh basically be be loving and kind to your children don't molest them or treat them as if they're defective machines don't know why i have to say that um anyway Kent, kentler's career was framed by his belief that the damage wrought by dominant fathers uh, an early memory of his was walking in the forest on a spring day and running up to keep up with his father he says i had only one wish that he should take my hand and hold it in his which is really sad that his father didn't do that don't get me wrong and i've got to say as a dad right i i take the opportunity to hold my kids hands wherever i get the whenever they try to hold my hand it's just it's nice to do you know, because it shows that you're there for them. And it is wrong to, to withdraw this kind of affection from your kids. But anyway, uh, he wrote in a, he wrote that in a parenting mag in, magazine in 1983. And uh, he's, his father was a lieutenant in World War One and believed in rod and batten pedagogy, which um, just means a very strict disciplinarian German upbringing. Uh, so this led him to deeply resent his own father. Uh, his father was called back to active duty uh, during World War II. He rose to the rank of colonel, moved the family to Berlin, where he worked in the high command in the uh, Nazi army. Uh, the, my father's authority was never based on his own accomplishments, but on the large institutions in which he snuck into that rubbed off on him, Kentler wrote. He was 17 when the Nazis were defeated, and his father came home a broken man. I never obeyed him again, and I felt terribly alone. So Kentler began to identify Nazism with sexual repression, and then, naturally, he thought, well, Anti-Nazism means sexual liberation. You can see where that train of thought's going. Uh, you absolutely Total can. inclusivity, as the RAF called it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And so anti-Nazism means total inclusivity. Kentler himself was gay and felt he always had one leg in prison because... Uh, homosexuality was criminalized in Germany until, I think it was the late 80s. Uh, so he's worried that he will be arrested for being gay, which you know, I don't think we should arrest gays or anything like that. But I also don't think that um, any of this has any reflection on what is and isn't Nazism. Don't know why I have to say that. In 1960, he got a degree in psychology, which he felt that would, quote, allow him to be an engineer of the soul. That's what you want, isn't it? A gay communist engineering your soul? What could go wrong? 
He was, of course, a leftist activist, if you can believe it. He became involved in a student movement when at university and in a meeting of the Republican Club. And for Americans hearing the word Republican, they're not thinking of your republic. They're thinking of the French Revolution Republic, uh, a left wing republic, basically, uh, a group of a, which was a group established by left wing intellectuals and publicly identified himself as gay for the first time. He was inspired by the Marxist psychoanalyst Wilhelm Reich. Marxist psychoanalyst. What an awful combination of pseudoscientific nonsense that is roundly debunked now. No one thinks Marxism or psychoanalysis is scientific in any way, shape or form. But back in the 70s, they doubtless did. And so he was like, yeah, I'm a Marxist psychoanalyst as well, who had argued that the free flow of sexual energy was essential to building a new kind of society. The kind of society in which paedophiles will be given access to children by the state. Kentler's dissertation urged parents to teach their children that they should never be ashamed of their desires. Once the first feelings of shame exist, they multiply and easily expand to other areas of life. That's right, if you've ever felt ashamed of something, you're a Nazi. Kentler's goal was to develop a child-rearing philosophy for a new kind of German man. Sexual liberation, he wrote, was the best way to, quote, prevent another Auschwitz. If you aren't giving children to paedophiles, you want to kill the Jews. It's merely the first step. I mean, I don't mean to laugh. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Most people's reaction to that, you sick, is that they'll build one for you. Suddenly, it seems as if all relationship structures could and must be reconfigured and if there was any hope of producing a generation less damaged than the previous one ah yes this is what well, that's what this is going to do produce a, a generation of of young men who are not damaged that's right that's what that does in the late 60s educators in more than 30 german cities and towns began establishing experimental daycare centers where children were encouraged to be naked and explore one another's bodies With brave new world go and check out our book club on brave new world that's exactly where that's going exactly where that's going is unbelievable right hyper scientific total inclusive world yeah so kentley uh, kentler so i keep saying kentley because our web developer's name is kentley uh, and I do not <laughs> I, and kentley obviously does not sign off on any of kentler's uh <laughs> ideas uh kentler became a star and germany foremost expert he uh he then befriended and this is where it gets really hmm mask off he befriended a 13 year old named ulrich whom he described as, quote, one of the most sought-after prostitutes in the station scene. So this is around uh, the zoo station in Berlin, right? 13-year-old prostitute. He thinks he's a 13-year-old prostitute. Now, I would describe a 13-year-old who is being taken advantage of by adults as a rape victim. As a sexual slave. Yes. But then that's because I'm not German. When Kentler asked Ulrich where he wanted to stay at night, Ulrich told him about a man called Mother Winter, who fed boys from the zoo station and did their laundry. In exchange, they slept with him. I said to myself, this is Kentler talking, if the prostitutes call this man Mother, he can't be bad. What a leap of logic that is. Later, he noted that Ulrich's advantage was that he was handsome and he enjoyed sex so he could give something back to paedophile men who looked after him. Remember, all through the late 20th century, the sort of latter half of the 20th century, leftist organizations in Germany, in France, in Britain, and presumably in America, in fact, we know in America as well, in Nambla, Nambla all guy tried, in charge, communist. all of them tried to normalize pedophilia. They, they either had the pedophile information exchange, of which Harriet Harman was connected in Britain, you had Foucault, Derrida, de Beauvoir, and all of the other French intellectuals signing a letter to the French government to get them to reduce the age of consent to 13, Foucault himself was the accused of being a paedophile rapist in was Algeria or Tunisia, somewhere like that. And here we have Kentler, who himself was a paedophile rapist and orchestrated a state-sponsored program to put children in paedophiles' households. Right? The left cannot ever be trusted with children. Ever. It's not even just they're a communist and a pedo. The pedoism they justify by their communism. Yes, it is informed by the communists, by their left-wing beliefs. Kentler formalised Ulrich's arrangement. I managed to get the Senate officer to approve it. So the German Senate signed off on Kentler's formal prostitution of a child. 
He wrote in Borrowed Fathers, Children Need Fathers, Kentler found several other paedophiles who lived nearby and helped them set up foster homes too. At the time, the Berlin Senate, which governed the city, one of 16 states in the country, was eager to find new solutions to the life problems of our society in order to confirm and maintain Berlin's reputation as an outpost of freedom and humanity. If you want to be considered an outpost of freedom and humanity, you have to be putting children in pedos' homes. Otherwise, you're a Nazi. The left. Yes, yeah, signed the left. And so he just, I mean, it wasn't surprising that he just admitted what he was doing to the Berlin Senate. I mean, he just told them, out in the open. Everyone was fine with this, right? In 1981, Kentner was invited to the German Parliament to speak about why homosexuality should de be decriminalised. Uh, but he just strayed unprompted into a discussion of his experiment. We looked after, an, it's just us it's talking about this experiment in front of the German Parliament, right? We looked after and advised these relationships very intensively. We held consultations with the foster fathers and their sons, many of whom had been so neglected they never learned to read or write. These people only put up with these feeble-minded boys because they were in love with them, he told the lawmakers. Intersectional pedo rights is going to come. His summary did not seem to provoke concerns. Perhaps the politicians were receptive because the project seemed to be the opposite of the Nazis' reproductive experiments. With their rigid emphasis on propagating certain kinds of families, or perhaps they were unconcerned because, in their opinion, the boys were already lost. Or maybe it's because they were a bunch of pedos. Who do you think is right there? Do you think it's the author, or do you think it's me? I think they're leftists. It's caused me. And therefore, the evidence is... A 2020 report commissioned by the Berlin Senate, scholars at the University of Hildesheim, concluded that, quote, the Senate also ran foster homes or shared flats for young Berliners with paedophile men in parts of West Germany. These foster homes were run by sometimes powerful men who lived alone and were given this power by academia, research institutions, and other pedagogical environments that accepted, supported, or even lived out paedophile stances. The report concluded that some, quote, Senate actors had been part of this network while others merely tolerated the foster home because icons of educational reform policies supported such arrangements. There were pedos in the German Berlin State Senate. They were part of this organised, orchestrated, state-funded paedophile network specifically designed to put vulnerable, very vulnerable, in fact, young boys, take them either from their parents or take them from the streets and put them with paedophiles who would rape them. Welcome to leftism. This is leftism. Kentler himself, of course, abused the foster children in his own care. Can you believe that he also fostered a bunch of these boys? No way. What a shock. He adopted three boys and several... And he, the father of... He, he was, of course, single. Uh, three adopted sons and several of the foster children appearing to be conducting his own informal version of the experiment the Berlin Senate had organised. So he was doing it himself. Karen Deseret, the co-author of a book called Sex, Lust and Life, told Nentwig that two of Kentler's foster sons had come to her for therapy and divulged that Kentler had sexually abused them. He had obviously sexually abused all of them because the point of this was sexual abuse. Institutionalised, state-funded sexual abuse. Kentler seemed to consider himself to be in a romantic relationship with one of his foster sons. Quote, when Kentler was 57, he wrote a friend of his called Schmidt a letter explaining why he was ageing happily rather than becoming lonely and resigned, and he said it was because he and his 26-year-old son were, quote, part of a very fulfilling love story that had lasted 13 years and still felt fresh, so he'd been molesting him since he was 13 years old. To understand this state of mind, Kentler wrote, his friend should know his secret. Of course, Kentler was an open paedophile advocate. For much of his career, Kentler spoke of paedophiles as benefactors. They offered neglected children, quote, a possibility of therapy, he told Der Spiegel in 1980. This is like going yeah, to the Times. Der de Spiegel is a very left-wing outlet. Of course it is. But it's, like, it's, but it's also very mainstream yeah, it is. in America. And this is the point. It's very like going Germany. to the Times. Or, yeah, it's, sorry, in Germany. Sorry, Americans. Uh, it's like it's like going to any major newspaper now in any country. Probably the Guardian, actually, be the perfect example. Well, I suppose it would be. Yeah, it's probably more mainstream than the Guardian, though. But uh, but when the Berlin Senate commissioned him to prepare an expert report on the subject of homosexuals as caregivers and educators in 1988, he explained there was no need to worry that children would be harmed by sexual contact with caretakers as long as the interaction was not forced. The consequences can be very positive, especially when the sexual relationship can be characterized as mutual love. 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just amazed open. that along this entire line of events, no one he spoke to killed him. Like, no one. Well, they killed themselves. What? He changed his mind on all of this after the 13-year-old he had been abusing for such a long time committed suicide. In 1991, he seemed to rethink his opinion after his youngest adopted son... Again, I can't believe we even describe it that way. The youngest so rape victim. His, his, his youngest sex right? slave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, youngest sex slave. The one he praised in the letter to Schmidt committed suicide. He then, uh, then he read the paper Confusion of the Tongues Between Adult and Child, The Language of Tenderness and Passion by someone called Sandor Ferranzi, a Hungarian psychoanalyst and a student of Freud, who described how sexual relationships between adults and children were always asymmetrical, exploitative, and destructive. Why would we need a paper to know Jesus that? Christ. Oh, thankfully, well, science. I've, I've, the science has finally said that molesting children is bad. Now I know what to do. Unbelievable. <sighs> Right. And and so and what's ironic is it comes from a psychoanalyst, so it's not even the science. You know, this is this is Freudian nonsense. But Freudian nonsense that happens to have hit upon a which, truth. Which your peer reviewed study that nonsery is evil. Yes. I don't need one. Yeah, I don't yeah, exactly. You don't need a study to tell you nonsery is bad, right? A flamethrower. But anyway. Uh he warns that uh, to give children more love or love of a different kind that they seek will just uh, will have just as pathogenic consequences as denying them love. Which I think is true, obviously. But why do I even have to say that? Children's personalities are not sufficiently consolidated in order to be able to protest. They will subordinate themselves like automata. They become oblivious to their own needs and identify themselves with the aggressors. So yeah, it's nice that science has finally told us that being a pedo is wrong. But he never took responsibility for the abuse that he gave, of course. In an interview with a German historian in 1992, he spoke of his grief for his adopted son and said, Unfortunately, I only read the Ferenczi essay after his death. If only I'd read that before he committed suicide, maybe I would have stopped molesting him. He did not confess to abusing his son. Instead, he said that the boy had been sexually abused by his birth mother. Sure. He hung himself because of that, he told the historian. I've experienced it in the biggest way, in a close way, and I'm certainly partly to blame. Yeah, you are definitely to blame for this. And I don't think that... I mean, I don't know whether he was abused by his mother or not. Who knows? But, like... God, if that even matters in the case of him, yes. like his responsibility... I mean, it's not like he didn't abuse another bunch of boys as well and orchestrated the institutional abuse of... I mean, we don't even know how many it is. There's dozens at least. Fucking Senate. Probably hundreds. Like, yeah. Yes, yes, fellow senators, I am engaged in this. Yes, just open... Here's some money. ...pedophile sex slavery. Uh, in what was likely his last recorded public statement about paedophilia in an interview in 1999, he referred to it as a sexual disorder and alluded to the impossibility of an adult and child sh uh, sharing an understanding of sexual contact. The problem, he says, is the adult will always have the monopoly on definition. Or well, bravo. Bravo at the very end of your life after having caused oh, suicide. It takes, it takes socialists 40 years to get to the goddamn point that everyone gets at birth, which is that pedos serve death. It's just unreal, isn't it? Right? And so the AFD... Uh offered to help Marco, but when he accepted, he was forced to distance themselves from his politics, as if it's the AFD's politics, the sort of conservative, like, you know, I, I mean, in a way, they're libertarian, aren't they? You know, like, from but, what we've met of them, yeah. From what we've met of them, they don't seem to be collectivist. But, but also, what's their politics? anti pedo Yeah, well, we, we would like to have the German government be held accountable for the paedophile network they set up, is basically the thrust of this. But that's a political stance that can't be you to be seen with. Yes. Is it? Yeah, you've right. got to defend the left, but the AFD, the Conservatives, you're not allowed to... You've got this... Oh, well, I'm just working with them because I need help. I don't agree with their politics of not molesting me. Right, from the perspective of the AFD... And we get them... Then we just get a hit piece on the AFD. And this is like, what? The AFD are the problem here, are they? Right? From the perspective of an AFD politician, Marco's, Marco's life story was expedient. A tale in, about the ways in which the German left had got sexual politics wrong. Well, that's a very charitable way of putting that. Jesus, it really is the meme of at least I'm a paedophile, but I'm not the uh, the far right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. That's you know, stupid uh, meme. That's what they're doing here. It's just like, well, okay, the left might be full of pedos, but at least they're not the AFD who think the pedoism <laughs> is bad. Yeah, exactly. It's wild, isn't it? But like, I love it. They got sexual politics wrong. No kidding. But they always have, and they always will, in every time and in every place. They get this wrong. At meetings of the German Parliament, members of the AFD uh, rallied around the Kentler case, if you can believe it, right? 
as a way of forcing left-wing politicians to address history that did not reflect well on their parties, but also as a ve- barely disguised vehicle for impugning homosexuality. Right, morons. If it's only the AFD rallying around it, that is a failure of every other party. The CDU, the SDP, or whatever the hell else is rising in Germany. Yep. Uh, an advocacy group affiliated with the AFD held Stop Kentler's Sex Education rallies to protest the way that sexuality is currently taught in German schools. Kentler's criminal paedophile spirit lives on unbroken in today's sex education, said one brochure printed by them. Well, I believe them. I don't, definitely don't believe the left-wing defenders of Kentler. I don't believe them. I, I believe that the AFD are probably right here, right? And so literally, like, they say in this article, history seemed to be looping back on itself. Right-wing politicians were calling for a return to the kind of, quote, terribly dangerous upbringing against which Kentler had rebelled. So if you're not a pedo, you're a Nazi. Literally what this New Yorker article is alleging is that the AFD want to return to Nazi upbringing of children, and if you don't do that, then you must be pro-pedo. It's wild. I don't think the AFD are like, yeah, what you should do is abuse your sons by denying them love and affection as a father, and so they, they... grow up weird and warped no what you need to do is have your sons put in a home with a pedo so he can molest them instead unreal unreal right at a hearing in february 2018 an afd representative called thorsten weiss complained that the senate had not taken responsibility for kentler's crimes uh, this is a case of political importance which requires some political action the senate is double crossing the victims and that is a scandal at another hearing seven months later weiss criticized the senate for being slow to gather information about kentler's experiment we will not allow government-sponsored pederasty to be swept under the rug because the afd are concerned primarily about families they're concerned about the principles of family values again conservative not nazi uh, anyway, Weiss, uh, to- uh, the, the representative, told him, uh, I would be surprised if she had said anything nice about us at all when they were like, oh, the AFD are just doing this because they're Nazis. Uh, he believes that there is still a paedophile network in Germany and that those connected to it use their political influence to make sure the network remains under the radar. Well, I suppose that's at least a step up from when they're just openly doing it with taxpayer money. So that's the story of how the leftists in Germany not only condoned paedophilia, they endorsed it and used the state and state funds to mandate it. We don't know how many victims there were. At least dozens, probably hundreds. This happened in 30 different cities. That's the left. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.